Welcome back, baseball fans, to your 1971-74 World Series review and end of season look at the stats. What you're looking at is your box score of Game 7 of the World Series. A series that looked like it was going the Tigers' way then, believe it or not, when the Pirates came back and all is said, they actually performed much better in most stat categories. And that's what we're going to analyze after we look at this box, Game 7. First inning, the Tigers, three-run homer for Norm Cash. And a rare time where they're the front runner having to hold on. It's normally the other way around. The Pirates have leads and then they get caught by the Tigers who do much clever stuff in the late innings. But in here, it was a case of sticking with Mickey Lolich because you're sticking with the script. Script is to go with him as a starter nine, uh, ignoring the warning signs in the seventh inning. Um, but the, the, the real reason is that Lolich and his bullpen are all very comparable to each other anyway. John Hiller might be a little bit better. Lolich might be better against left-handed batters than Hiller, but... Sherman, Culver, Hiller, and Lolich, all four of them are about as good as each other. So though, in that big seventh inning rally, Pirates just hit everything, getting the key sack fly by Al Oliver for the fourth and lead run. And then it was simply too much of Steve Blass, who yes, is your World Series MVP. Gave up the nine hits and three runs, but he threw a six hit shutout in the last eight innings to go with seven shutout innings in his previous start. Pirates win game seven, five to three. Congratulations to the Pirates. This is the first time I've had a Pittsburgh Pirate team win a World Series for me in all the many, 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 many years I played Strat. Couldn't get that 79 Pirate squad to do it in a couple attempts. And in this timeline, this was the fourth and final year that these 71 cards uh, can be used. Clemente will come back for his final year in 72 next year. But a lot of the other great stars of the Pirates will have to move on to different cards. So with that, let's take a look now at the World Series box. We're going to start with the Tigers, the runners-up. Some of the things that were predicted and some of the things that were surprising. What was predicted? Well, Gates Brown tearing it up. And Mickey Stanley was, an, was a surprise tear-up. But when you look at the number of, of games, you have to remember that only Jim Rooker was a left-handed starting pitcher for the Pirates. So Stanley only had 11 at-bats. They just were key hits. The key homer, the six RBIs with the four hits, led the Tigers tied with Norm Cash for RBI with just the four hits for Mickey Stanley. Uh, we'll look a little more into the... Tiger stats as these two guys often platoon with each other, but believe it or not, Mickey Stanley would have more plate appearances than Gates Brown during the season because he's a defensive player and finishes games for uh, in center field. But these two guys pretty much carried in the three spot, in the three hole in the lineup, the Tigers through the series. Al Kaline had six walks in the seven games, a 469 on base. He had a 420 on base, 424 on base during regular season. So he continued to do his stuff. Norm Cash's one big swing. Other than that, he just had three RBI in the other six games. Did it 310. Willie Horton had the other home run. And then none of the other guys. Jim Northrup really had a disappointing year. Looking, We'll look at his stats a little further. And then all these other Tigers, you know, the other, the infield, we, we ballyhooed a little bit that they uh, did so well without getting Ed Brinkman and Aurelio Rodriguez. This is the third different third base shortstop group this team has had the last three years. Remember, they had Maddox, Kevin Collins, Dick Trzewski. Then they had Cleet Boyer and Ed Brinkman. And then they switched to Verizer and Grabarkowitz with Terrell. That's not going to get it done right here, what you're saying. Plus the errors and the hits they gave up. And I, it's not like it's something new. The only thing that was new was that the Tigers had, uh, the Pirates had similar miscues out of their shortstop position. A Tiger team hit 253 on the year and they hit 247 in the World Series. With five home runs, seven games, 26 RBIs, and seven games is okay. It's not great. 
The pitching star, yeah, we knew Hiller was gonna be lights out, and he was. He saved uh, the three pirate wins, uh, the three tiger wins in four and a third innings. Fred Sherman, again, delivered. No failures there. Joe Coleman got really knocked around, and uh, what well, was that one bad start in game six? He got knocked around the balloon in his ERA. His other start, he pitched well. The story of this World Series is this reliance on Mickey Lolich in three starts. Possible 27 innings, I would assume. He pitched nine and a third in one start. It's too much Mickey Lolich. That's what it comes down to. Or perhaps just too much left-handed pitching against a pirate team that we thought, because of Al Oliver, because of Willie Stargell, because of Richie Hebner, because of the left-handed bats, we thought the pirates were going to be better versus righties. But indeed, they really beat up on the lefty Lolich. The other lefties, though, did well, Hiller and Sherman. And now let's take a look at the Pirates. And you can see that statistically, the Tigers, 247, Pirates 304, Tigers 469, Pirates 357, a run better. Pirates on average were winning games 4-3. And uh, it just seemed like they had to come back and scramble for it. And we'll show you the failures. And the failures were isolated to just a few areas. So here's your leading hitter of the uh, World Series. Yes, Frank Tavares went 7 for 12. And he stole a base. Pirates stole two bases all year. That's one of them. One of the two. Got to break up Clemente's 12 hits in seven games, along with Al Oliver. Batting second and third. You know, supporting, just keeping the engine going. Just keeping the motor going. Um... Hebner had five hits in Game 7, which is 10 for the whole series. So that kind of brought his average down a tiny bit. Rennie Stennett has a 353 card. <laughs> Six hits and 17 at-bats. He did that like 10 different times or whatever. And uh, yeah, he did the same thing. No walks. 353. Free swinger. 10 homers for the Pirates. And four by Pops. This is a staggering number. It's hard to imagine this, but Willie Stargell was 5 for 32. Did have the four of the five hits were home runs. He had seven RBI to lead his club. He hit 156 with no walks and 17 strikeouts. That's, that's uh, insane. Uh, I've never seen such production in one area. It's like keep one eye open, keep one eye closed. It's very scary. Dave Parker 077 for the rookie. A series he'd rather forget. Bill Mazeroski went 3 for 16, but those two home runs he hit. Those two solo shots. 1-1 one, one a game. Um, Manny Sengian had a big hit in the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the rally that got them in game 7. He had the big double. Could have been a grand slam. Um, and then let's look at the pitching and you're going to see one guy here here he is your World Series MVP right there Steve Blass uh, got the three his team won all three of his starts uh, he only got credit for one though he threw seven shutout innings a 180 ERA and a 108 whip and Keeson and Justy were the reliable guys in the bullpen. So these three guys pretty much won the World Series for the Pirates. They did win one other game. One of Bob Moose's two starts was good. But notice that there wasn't a finish. There wasn't a save finish in that one. That, that was the, um, I believe that was one of the blowouts. Yeah, that was the game six blowout where Bob Moose had a 7 nothing lead and he barely hung on. Um, yeah. And the interesting thing about the looking at the pitching stats is that, you know, the asterisk next to the last name denotes a left-handed pitcher. And that's these guys. All lefties. So Rooker had the one start, um, survived it, was available to come out of the bullpen at Game 7 if needed. Gave up the six runs. Um, left with a lead. And his bullpen, you know, he had a chance to win that game. Left with a lead. 7-6 lead, um, but the, they lost 9-8. And, you know, Dick Kelly blew the one game. The loss went to Alan Foster 
And there's Alan Foster's one start, which is fine. But Dick Kelly ruined it for him. And of course, here's our boy Ramon. Our boy Ramon Foster, Ramon Hernandez, just had a series two forget. Um, got three outs. He got three batters out and put seven men on base. And uh, that's really why this series was as close as it was. Well, on paper, it seemed like the Tigers were rolling, but it was a little bit misleading here. Pirates really were the better team and uh, proved it at the end. Looking at the roster comparison all year, let's take a look at that through the team stats to see if we get some symmetry and confirmation. Let's go with Detroit and first. And the Tigers. So you see right here, the numbers are very close to what they did. 253. Uh, they pitch much better than the regular season, a 346 ERA. They were 33 and 18, had the best winning percentage of all teams. Scored 247 runs, gave up 201. And for the year, here's Mickey. Mickey Lolich for the year. 11 and 5, 159 innings, 10 complete games, 288 ERA, 119 whip. You know, it was a great year. Uh, but he did not win a World Series game, so he was stuck at 11. And uh, two of those World Series starts were good. One of them was the blowout in game one. Joe Coleman, 10 and five. The ERA slipped over four because of that blowout at, uh, in game six at the end, in game six, that kind of hurt him. They're, they were, they really needed was a more capable number three guy because Bill Hands just was not it. And Tom Timmerman was a number four guy. Probably should have been used more. He actually pitched better than Hands, but only 41 innings. This is what I was saying about your number four starter. He generally pitches less than half as much, or or when they, or if you go all the way to the World Series, the further and further you go in your season, that the, the disparity grows even more because this guy grows moss and hardly ever is pitched. But maybe Timmerman, if he's got one more year left in '72, gets a more prominent role. Maybe he has a three starter next year to help the Tigers out. Here is the Tiger bullpen, the big three. Steve Keeley is down here. He was awful, but don't worry about that. He's just a long man. That's why his record is zero and zero. He was inconsequential, just innings eater. But the big three were five and two with a staggering 17 saves amongst them. Culver gave up one run in the World Series, otherwise his ERA would have been below Hiller's. Um, 044 and 078. And then Sherman also was fantastic. And not it's not like they gave up a lot of runs and, the, and they were uh, unearned. No, they only had uh, one unearned run there and one unearned run there. So brilliant use of the bullpen. Outstanding starting pitching. Maybe this offense could have done more, you could say, with a 253 batting average. The 331 on base is good. You'd like to see your OB on base be 60 or more points higher than batting average, so you're drawing walks. And speaking of drawing walks, this sticks out right here. Al Kaline, batted second all year because he draws walks. 421 on base. <laughs> 270 average. But I'm saying these these are the same. You're looking at the 68 Tiger guys rolling on rolling rolling along through the 70s. As if, uh, as if Bob Gibson's out there in Game 7. This time it was Steve Blast. They couldn't get him. Um, Mickey St uh, Northrup, remember? He hit the uh, he had the home run chance. Homer 1-15 to against the lefty in Game uh, 6, I believe. Because Blast threw a complete game in Game 7. So when, yeah, it was Ramon Hernandez, the left-handed reliever. Northrop rolled homer one of 15 and missed it by rolling a 16. He only had one homer during the whole 202 at bats of his season. So that just would have been made a, such a, you know, a change of everything. And again, Mickey Stanley Gates Brown here, the two headed monster. One guy can field, one guy can rake. Uh, each guy had six home runs. You know, that guy, whoever this one person is, is your, is, could be a league MVP. You add their stats together. Um, of course, Stanley played center. Gates would have been the DH, and uh, they would have had Willie Horton play left field while Northrop was in center. This is why Stanley, even though he only started versus left-handed pitching, he has more plate appearances because he finishes games. 
If you start a game with Mickey Stanley, he'll stay in it. So to get Gates Brown in a game started by a lefty, he would literally have to pinch hit for maybe Tom Verizer or Jerry Terrell or possibly not Grabarkowitz because he goes in there for defense. Possibly for freehand, though I don't know why you pinch it for freehand, but but again, yeah, Tom Verizer experiment. Three home runs with that card, all against righties, of course. But again, the defense, and yeah, it just didn't work out again for these Tigers. Grabarkowitz had the walks, so I'm more I'm happier with a 338 batting uh, on base and a 109 batting average for the Tigers. And the other player there was uh, Terrell and McAuliffe. Terrell 247. And, and Dick McAuliffe had a bad year too at second base. Nice on base, but just two home runs. You know, Norm Cash had the big blast in the American League Championship Series and the big blast in Game 7 of the World Series. Did have 12 home runs, 43 RBI. Fine year with that 71 card. But the all-star, the other all-star, was Willie Horton, who just bashed away with a 74 card, 16 home runs to lead the club. Your team MVP for this team, heck, it could be Horton, over, well, I guess Lola's is probably your team MVP still. 10 complete games. What that does to help everything out is amazing, when you can get a horse like that at the top. And particularly a good playoff horse. Not necessarily a good World Series horse, but at least a good wild card divisional league championship series pitcher. Mickey Lulch did the job. And for the first time, he failed in the World Series. So, let's take a look now at the uh, Pirates. And you see that in both categories, there are 286 batting average lead baseball and a 363 ERA. I want to start with Blast, because he's my World Series MVP. He's not the Pirates MVP, but I kind of knew that. He was 10-9, 316 ERA, 136 whip. Um, his job was just to, you know, be at the top of that rotation. They only had the two guys. They didn't have a three-headed monster uh, like Cuellar, Palmer, McNally, or Vita Blue, Hunter Holtzman, or Seaver, Kuzman, Matt Lack. It was a two-headed monster. It was really just Blast and Moose. Then uh, Rooker had just 88 innings, and then the, the young rookie, Alan Foster, they protected with just 67 innings. Nothing really amazing out of the, the starting pitching there. The story, again, was the bullpen, and particularly, uh, you know, you have Bruce Keeson's switch to reliever instead of starter. 37 and two-thirds innings. That's a lot of innings for a relief pitcher when you consider, you know, 67 innings for Foster as a starter. Pitched in a lot of games. Justy was magnificent. 210 ERA, 129 whip. And here's Ramon Hernandez down here. It's a real shame because he was having a decent season. He did have five saves. World Series blew his numbers up horribly. Probably raised his ERA by a run. A lot of decisions out of these guys. Justy Keeson here, six and three, eight and six. Had Dick Kelly, 10 and 6 bullpen. 110, lost 6, 15 saves. So, yeah, definitely good bullpen. Could have been great had Hernandez hung in there, but he didn't. It ultimately didn't hurt the Pirates as they won the World Series. And um, now let's take a look at the offense. And there's Rennie Stennett with that batting average again. Walked six times during the season. You see the two stolen bases stick out for Frank Tavares, one in the World Series, one in the regular season. Clemente's 341 card at 321. And you know, like I said about this Pirate team, they were very frustrating to use. They were down, they were game under 500 at the All-Star break, they were down in the World Series. And you really thought this was an underachieving team. And statistically, as pertains to their cards, the numbers aren't as good, but they're still good numbers. You'll take these numbers for your right fielder, your second baseman, etc. Uh, Dave Parker's 288 card at 317, so there's an overachievement. And Tavares uh, hit 312 in, in an anonymous number. Who I would never would have known that, <laughs> as he hardly made any noise on this team. Al Oliver did make a lot of noise, uh, big hits, 
and 85 of them, second to Clemente's 90. 85 hits in the uh, 66 games the Pirates played. That's the most of any team. Zisk was a platoon mate with Dave Parker, disgruntledly. These guys would be disgruntled because they don't get enough playing time. Parker should be your everyday player, outfielder, and so should Richie Zisk, and they have to platoon with each other. There's, there's, they, they just have too much talent here. There's just too much, and they got to figure out how to get rid of it, you know. Zisk will move on to, I think, the White Sox. Oliver moves on to the Texas Rangers. Yeah. Sangian, he had to catch all year. The only other catcher on the roster was we had an emergency catcher. Uh, Richie Hebner would be the emergency catcher. Him and Bob Robertson, who were corner, usually corner infielders, can double up as emergency catchers if needed. But Sangian caught all year long for this team. And by the way, if you're wondering, his injury is on two twelve, twos and twelves. Um, normally, your catchers have injuries on threes and elevens. That was one of the reasons why we didn't justify a full-time backup catcher for this team. Hebner's numbers are kind of pedestrian. It was just when they moved him into the leadoff spot, the team was more successful. Though Hebner wasn't necessarily more successful. Do like the 333 on base. Would like it to be up to 360. But his numbers overall are down. 10 homers is nice. Bob Robertson's 16 homer and 45 RBIs are nice. He had some big homers in the series. And we're getting down there, folks, as you can tell. Uh, Mazeroski, there it is, five home runs. <laughs> he had one and he, uh, in 72, but he had five, of course, all against left-handed pitching amongst his 24 hits. And here are the final numbers for Willie Stargell. He led all of baseball with 25 home runs. I may have mentioned the most home runs I've ever had in one of these carryover leagues is 30 by Mike Schmidt in 61 games. Uh, Stargell had 25 of those in 66 games here. I think Willie, I think Johnny Bench had 24 in 58 games once. Made, uh, when he made contact, 25 homers and, with just 55 hits, 57 RBIs is, is one of the all-time highs. I think somebody got 60. Schmidt had, Mike Schmidt was like 30 homers, 61 RBIs, I believe. Um, you got to go over this column here. This is unbelievable. 27 walks, 84 strikeouts, 261 at bats. This is the 71 Stargell card, arguably the best year of his career uh, in that three way tie for uh, MVP with Joe Torre and Hank Aaron. Um, 211 batting average, actually the worst of the three years. I talked about how bad his batting average has been with this particular card. Um, the 285 on base actually looks nice in, in retrospect to the average. It's just that he didn't have any walks in the World Series, which is very strange. He was no walks and 17 strikeouts. But these are your Pirates. They are the world champion in 71. In 72, the entire baseball world sort of became very mediocre. There's a lot of, uh, you know, like a 92-93 win team. Like Oakland, Oakland A's that won the World Series in 72 weren't particularly good, actually. Their pitching was good, but their hitting was awful. And, you know, there's, there's just mediocrity. Baseball doesn't get sparked again until 1973 when the DH is brought in. I think it's a... I think something has to do with... Six, 69 expansion really was a boon. But four years in, 70, 71, 72, it was back to mediocre again. So then they had to add the DH in 73. But the Pirates are going to have a nice chunk of these players. Uh, not that Stennett card anymore. Clemente will still have a card. We, we know Parker, Oliver, and Zisk will get better and continue, as will Hebner. You know. Let's take a look now at the entire... Um, league stats here so um, the interleague play ended with uh, the nationally picking up a game they're now 14 14 game difference uh, we've sort of the batting average is actually uh, without at bats being factored in now so this is actual sort by batting average for all American League players and Tony Gonzalez was a player who played 69 at bats for the Rangers 
big story here was how uh, to uh, Tony Oliva flirted with 400 um, and didn't quite get there, and his twin team didn't make the playoffs, and so he unfortunately lost out in the MVP voting to Reggie Jackson. Bobby Mercer's big year carrying the Yankees was a big story. Uh, and look at Mickey Stanley's 362 in more than a part-time role. I mean, he was, you know, he should probably get, be getting a full-time role next year. Here's Gates Brown, 6-23, and 6-26. and 26. You're going to see a lot of platoon players with high batting averages, obviously. Um, here's Dick Allen leading the White Sox. 337, 731. Really could have used double digit homers here, maybe 40 or more RBI. You know? Um, I don't, I'm not going to. Yeah, three stolen bases, I don't know. You know, sometimes this. Teams that with great offenses don't like to steal bases because they look at it as shortening their inning. So I don't mind him doing just three steals. Lenny Randall was your American League Rookie of the Year uh, with his 1974 card. And by rookie, meaning the first time the player gets into my league versus the first time he's in Major League Baseball. Randall was in Major League Baseball in the early 70s, hitting around 200. But we promoted him, you could say, from AAA to, to the Carrier League in 74, and that's what he did. And here's the other half of Carlos May, Dick Allen right here. You see how close these guys are in performance. And here's Toronto's big star, uh, Mike Lum hitting 324. Great story there. Here's your MVP, Reggie. And again, when you look at his numbers and Oliva's numbers, you got to remember the 16 stolen bases, the fact that uh, 11 homers and 36 RBIs, and a first place team. Um, plus, he was carrying Oakland when everybody else in Oakland was struggling. Um, how about the year for Brooks Robinson? I mean, just a bunch of offense out of a guy who would be declining with the, with a bat. You know, he's not. He shouldn't be hitting over 270 anymore. But he had a huge year with the offense. Did not have enough help around him. Probably misses Frank Robinson, who Baltimore had traded away by that, by here by now. Um, here's the Willie Horton performance down here. And then as we start getting into the, the mediocre performances, uh, we can see Tommy Harper's 22 stolen bases there. The always fun Mike Epstein car. We've got to figure out if Mike Epstein goes to the Oakland A's or not. They could certainly use another bat in that Oakland lineup. They won't win the World Series next year, begin their dynasty. It's funny for to say begin the dynasty because all I keep talking about for the last three years is the Oakland dynasty. It doesn't start till next year in the 72, 73, 74, 75 season. And there's Norm Cash contributing for the Tigers again. All the Tiger numbers are going to be inflated because they played so many games. Campanaris has 17 stolen bases. Let's uh, skip down and see if we find any major problems outside of the outliers, batting averages. Yeah, Bobby Wine, it doesn't matter because he was a two shortstop. So, you know, he had the bat, unfortunately, but they had him for his tunis. Here is disappointment right here. You know, Petroselli had a horrible year, and that really torpedoed Boston season. When you could, when you go from the 1969 Petroselli card, a 2E16 shortstop who hit 40 home runs, and then just a few years later he torpedoes your season like that. There's the Verizon mistake, and the you know, again it just didn't work out for the Tigers in their shortstop position. Of course. You know, these guys, they get to the World Series. They, the Tigers have been to three World Series in the last five years. It's, it's hard to bang on them for having mediocre dudes playing shortstop and third. What if you give them a gold glove shortstop, but you take away elsewhere? Then they're not good elsewhere. So, yeah, it's hard to bang on them for that. Okay, enough of uh, that. Let's take a look at National League hitting. Some Dodger part-time players hit 400, you know, Jaeger and Buckner. Um, Brock Davis, uh, these are all singles. He doesn't have an extra base hit on his card. So one of the worst 372 performances <laughs> with production because uh, they're all singles. Bate McBride was the lead leading the Cardinals in hitting of a surprise Cardinal team that just missed out on the playoffs. 
There's Stennett, of course. Talked about him. Dusty Baker just had a monster year for a very disappointed Brave team and went one and done. Best team in baseball going into the playoffs. Then they just they got nipped by the Phillies. Four games to two. And that's a shame, but they'll be back. Baker's card will be back. Um, two Florida Marlins hit 350. They must be really awful if two of their players hit 350 and they finish in last place. The rest of that Marlin team must be terrible, you'd have to think. Um, another Diamondback, Dave May, along with Brock Davis. So, you know, they're just the two guys on that team. Here is the, uh, the one of the big reasons the Phillies went from worst to the League Championship Series. Along with Mike Schmidt, you had Gary Maddox, 345, 535 with 11 stolen bases. Outstanding for Gary Maddox. There's Clemente, 8 homer and 42 RBI as well. So he did it all over. Just in their stolen bases, but everywhere else he contributes. Madlock being added to the Cub roster for his first year. 336, you know. But they have a log jam. they got to figure out what to do with Ron Santo and Bill Madlock in the DH spot. They have to figure that out. Steve, Steve Garvey got promoted to his 74 MVP card. It was okay. The production here is not that great, but it did hit 317. Billy Williams. His production is not that great. Betting average is up there. Um, but his teammate, who will, you might see in here... Uh, Jim Hickman went to the All-Star game in his place. Here's Sedania carrying the Astros. 9, 25, and 14 with 305. Outstanding work there. As usual, as per norm, one of my favorite dramatic players throughout this 1970s is Sedania. He'll play his entire career with the Astros. He won't move on to Cincinnati in my replay. And here's Joe Torre, the 71 MVP. Really provided the the you know, Homer and RBI here. Just the batting average is is anybody will take 297, but it's a 363 card. So that kind of sours that a little bit, you know. And they just missed the playoffs by a game. That's how close it was. So here's Hanks Aaron, and you see, you know what? He didn't even get the 20 home runs. He was at 17 before the postseason tournament, and then he started the slump. He was hitting 327, finishes at 292. Did get the MVP, though, as we awarded that when Atlanta was running away with this thing. And let's go take a uh, uh, scroll down and see if... Um, oh, one thing that caught my eye here, Pete Rose, 275. And worse than that, I believe you have yeah, Johnny Bench. 266. 8 and 24 is okay. And they big the other big third uh, is Perez. He's even worse down here somewhere. I don't know I can't see him right now. But anyway, uh, here's Frank Robinson. Had Summers and RBI, it's just 257 though. Uh, but he got Portland in the playoffs. You you acquire Frank Robinson, you go to the playoffs. Happened to Cleveland last year, happened to Portland this year. Let's go down to the bottom and see who who really hurt their teams. Most of these guys are just platoon players. Ron Say's rookie card, or rookie performance, not very good. He actually batted ninth uh, all year anyway. Here, here, Andy Costco. A lot of playing time here with eight home runs, but the 173 average might not justify that. Only 17 RBI, too, not, you know. We're talking about Ed Brinkman and Aurelio Rodriguez from missing from Detroit. Well, there's Ed Brinkman. You know, that's the trade-off. You get 177, a homer, and seven RBI, but you do a Gold Glove shortstop. Would a Gold Glove shortstop help the Tigers win that World Series? Assuming that the that their opponent has a crappy shortstop, yeah. <laughs> um, both teams had crappy shortstops in the World Series. So let's say the Tigers decide that they were going to bump up to a great shortstop, and, and the Pirates did the same thing, you know. You're really looking for a disparity between the two teams. Um, and there, here is, and this is my place to stop. 
uh, for the hitting at least. This is where the off season will begin with Joe Morgan <laughs> being traded from Houston to Cincinnati. So Houston's there looking at the numbers and going, man, this Morgan guy, he might be done. His career might be shot. Maybe we should move on from him. Oh, that's Cincinnati on the phone. Let's see what they're. Let's see what they they want. Look at National League pitching. This is sort of by ERA, so you're going to see relief pitchers here. Steve Hamilton, Giants reliever here. Jim Brewer, Dodgers reliever. Tom House. This is the big story in Atlanta. Uh, adding his card made Atlanta gave that a stud closer, Buzz Capra, a stud starter. Uh, who's the best, who's the first, I guess, starting pitcher on this ERA list? There's Clay Kirby. They did a nice job for the Padres. Three digits here in innings pitched for Marischal. That's why the Giants got that number two seed. Old Marischal, like fine wine, continues. Um, we did give Carlton the um, Cy Young. Uh, 10 and 5, 301 ERA. Um, and of course, I don't think there was an 11 game winner. You did have Blast getting 10, yeah, 10 wins, and Moose getting 10 wins because they played so long. American League numbers. Here, here there's Hiller. We already saw the did the review on him. You we'll probably see George Culver. Yep, there's him. And Sh Fred Sherman will come up soon. All these relievers. Sparky Lyle, outstanding. This is probably one of the big reasons why the Yankees made the playoffs is that Sparky Lyle was so reliable as closing games out. Toronto's closer as well. Joe Grazenda, the last year we'll have this card. He was a Washington Senator. 12 saves, 13 and 12. And the first starting pitcher is Jim Palmer. He got the Cy Young. 9 and 6, 224 ERA. Unfortunately, he did not win a game in the league championship series. He got knocked out because of that, that stupid DH rule in one game, and then the Orioles got shut out in his other start. Didn't score a run for him, so that's a tough break for Palmer. He'll be back, as will the Orioles. Not as good as the 69 through 71 Orioles, but they will still be back in the American League East. Nolan Ryan actually had a nice year for once, 236 ERA. Uh, is there a 10 game winner? Well, you have the 11 game winning Lolich. There he is. And that's going to be about it. Grant Jackson, Baltimore's closer with 10 saves there. It was a really horrific pitching performance. Hate to end on a sour note, but uh, this guy had a year of nine for a season. National Leaguer, somebody had a, uh, not too bad, Pedro Rabone had an ERA of eight. Another bad story for the Reds. Well, maybe we should just end this um, video with um, a look at the year-to-year -year stats and see if there's a trend there, because I put this together to end with. So this is what just happened in the year 2023. Um, this right here is wins and losses. So what I look for is quantity of games. Um, and, in the, and in 2022, I played the most games ever at 657. And I consider that to be the most competitive year. There's a drop, but when you look at the drop, 631, you can see it's still better than years in 2020, 2019, pretty close to 2018. It's just that year 22 is a super competitive year. The last year of the 1970 cards. But here is the trend of batting average, excuse me, in ERA. Here's ERA and batting average right here. 391 ERA, we're down to a 374 ERA. In 2024, next year, when uh, it goes to 72 as a predominant year, I think it's gonna be kind of a dead ball era again. So I'm gonna say next year, 255, and maybe a 365 ERA next year. That's my targets, I think. And then after that, it'll start going back up once we get to 73, 74, 75, 76 years after that. So, it's good to keep track of these trends. And you can see, again, I play 630, 40, 50 some odd games. And these games are all played between St. Patrick's Day and Labor Day. Squeeze that baseball season before football season starts. That's it. 
break up the World Series champion Pittsburgh Pirates. They won the 71-74 uh, championship. We'll have elimination videos for the Tigers and Pirates, plus a card reconciliation video, and then it'll be the off season will begin. Thanks for checking this out. We'll see you next time.